Welcome to Học tiếng Anh với Joseph, where we build vocabulary and practice pronunciation through reading. Today we will read part 2 of 10 of the Overcode. It is not easy to find another person who has so completely surrendered to his task. It is not enough to say that he took care of his office with devotion. No, he took care of it with love. In his office, in that perpetual transcription, he had his own varied, pleasant world. As he rode, real pleasure appeared on his face. Indeed, there were few letters of his pets, and as he wrote them, he was in power. He smiled, blinked, and smirked at his lips, so that the obvious on his face could read almost every letter drawn by his pen. If he had been rewarded with enthusiasm, he would have, to his great surprise, perhaps received the title of state councillor, but now He had only, as his comrades mockingly said, served. One cannot help but point out that he, after all, had received some attention. One officer, who was a benevolent man and wanted to reward him for his long service, had ordered him to do something a little more important than the usual transcript, namely, to write some sort of excerpt from an already completed letter to another agency. The only difference between this work and the transcript was that he had to change the caption and change a few verbs from the first person to the third. This gave him so much work and headache that he became sweaty and wet. He wiped his forehead and finally said, "No." This is not going to work. It is best that you give me something to write. From then on, he was always allowed to transcribe, and outside of his circle, nothing seemed to exist. He didn't take care of his suit at all, and so his office jacket was no longer green, but a hint of something reddish gray. His collar was narrow and low, so that his neck, which was by no means long, protruded very far from it, as if by the plaster cats moving around their heads, which were circled by dozens of traders on their heads. And there were always haystacks, or pieces of yarn, or something else in his clothes. Besides, he had a special skill when walking the streets, to always hit under the windows just when throws were thrown out of them. And that's why the cover of his hat was always full of watermelon and melon shells and all sorts of stumbling. Akaki Akakievich never once in his life paid attention to what was happening on the streets every moment and who was constantly watched by his younger colleagues, whose lively gaze was so excellently trained that he immediately noticed from whom the strap of his trousers had broken on the other side of the street. But Akaki Akakievich, if he looked at anything, saw only his clean lines, written in flat handwriting everywhere and only if the horse's muzzle, without his knowledge, knew what had appeared, landed on his shoulder and blew his tall nostril against his cheek, then he only noticed in the middle of their line, but rather in the middle of the street. When he came home, he immediately sat down to eat, and at that moment broke his cabbage soup. Then ate a piece of flesh with the onion, without ever noticing its taste, ate everything with flies and everything that God had sent to him at that moment. 
Noticing that his stomach was starting to bulge, he got up from the table, took his ink bottle, and began to transcribe the papers he had brought home. If he had not brought anything with him, he copied for his own amusement, especially papers that were notable not for his beautiful handwriting, but for his valuable address to some new or important person. Not even when the grey sky of St. Petersburg was completely extinguished and the whole world of civil servants ate their dinner, each part of their salary, part of their own taste, when everyone was already dressing after the pencil rumble, buzz, their own and other necessary actions. And all that tireless people were over their own needs taken to do. When officials rushed to take advantage of the rest of the day, rushing to the theater, rushing to the streets to spend some time looking at their hats, who lived on the third or fourth floor in two small rooms, which also included an entrance hall or a kitchen, and saw some kind of fashion item, such as lamps or some small items, which had required many sacrifices, fasting and sitting indoors in their spare time, that is, when all the officials were scattered in their friends' small flats to play noisy, sipping tea from glasses with kopecks, pulling rattles from long chimneys, telling all sorts of old gossip from the upper social circle between games, because a Russian can never and under no circumstances refuse to gossip. Or if there was nothing, tell me about to whom it was said that he had been cut off from the horse in the memorial statue of Falkonatov. In a word, when everyone was having fun, even then, Akaki Akakievich did not indulge in any kind of amusement. No one could say they had ever seen him anywhere. After writing enough, he rested with a smile, already anticipating, wondering what God would send tomorrow for transcription. So rolled the earthly life of that man who, with his annual salary of 400 rubles, was fully as satisfied with his destiny, and he could possibly have lived very old if it weren't for the various accidents that have been scattered, not only on the paths of life of name counselors, but also of secret real court counselors and all counselors who give no one more advice than anyone else get. St. Petersburg has a harsh enemy for all those whose annual salary revolves around the ears of 400 rubles. This enemy is nothing but the frost from our north, even though it is otherwise said to be quite healthy. At nine o'clock in the morning, that is, just as the streets are filled with people going to their offices, it begins to distribute such harsh and pungent keystrokes to everybody's nose, without distinction that the clerks don't know where to end up hiding them. It is at this time when the, even the foreheads of senior officials are stinging in the frost, and the waters rise to the eyes, that name councils are sometimes quite unsafe. The barely escaped frostbite, as he runs as fast as he can between those five, six blocks, and then punches his feet firmly in the hallway. Okay, let's go to the vocabulary section. Perpetual. Perpetual means never ending or changing okay enthusiasm là sự hăng hái sự nhiệt tình benevolent nhân từ nhân đức benevolent man người nhân từ bold was starting to bold bold là phồng ra Tức là cái bụng của ông ta bắt đầu phồng ra. Sacrifices. Sacrifice. Đó là sự hy sinh. Có những nghĩa khác nữa. 
có nghĩa là giết người hoặc là giết vật để cúng thần linh cũng là sacrifice fasting này là nhịn ăn chay nè abstain from all or some kinds of food or drink especially at a religious observance all right so thank you so much for your time and I will see you in part 3. Bye for now.